Becker here again. Welcome to, back to Feed the Beast Monster plus Greg Tech plus Galactic Craft. There's some Galactic Craft. There's some Greg Tech. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to start off by running through what I did on the stream real quick. Uh, I made this guy. He's a big reactor. He's, uh, it's a big reactor mod by Erogenous Beef. One of the best modern names I know of. And um, if you want to see how I made this, it's in the first part of the stream video when we put this together. Um, I'm going to run it through it really quickly now. All these parts are very similar. You need... These guys call reactor casings that use graphite bars and any kind of processed uranium. So my, my uranium is all getting processed into that stuff, the Greg Tech stuff. And that gets you these reactor casings and then all these other bits you make from those. So we've got access ports. We've got three access ports here. We've got this blue one is set to output. You can just change that input output there, look. That changes it from green to blue, yellow, green. Is it green? It looks green to me, yeah. To blue. Um, this is a design made by Finrod after doing loads of testing. Finrod's part of the Resident Raz community. And um, he's got a Google Doc that I will link in, the, in this video as well. It's also linked in part one of the stream in the video description if, you, uh, if I forget to put it on here. Now, I want to change something a little bit here. I want to change something around a little bit because it's not working exactly how I'd want it. So, what I'm going to do is grab a little bit of... A little bit of cobble, I guess. I'm going to use dirt. But, oh, I don't know where my dirt is. Let me grab a bit of dirt over here. There we go. I'm going to put my dirt in my end slot there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the reactor control at a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break them. And just for now, what I want to do is I want to swap these guys. I want to put them on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this. So I'm using my pick here and because I've got them dirt blocks in there right click will place a dirt block like so so this has got liquid ender resonant ender in it I don't want it to pour out on me so I'm going to break and then place a block there yep cool that works so I'm just doing that to stop things pouring out on me works quite nice and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to come to the side here and go break oops didn't break it didn't break it there we go one there, I want one there, and I want one there. Cool. And then I just want to swap these back for the glass. So that's so you can use your Tinker's Construct as a building tool. There, and you see it's reformed into its multi block. The corners change. Now, I want to change this around a little bit. What I want to do with the redstone control is let me see what each block does anyway. We've got these access ports let you get things in and out so as you can see we've got a barrel with a uh, thermal expansion item duct just putting uranium into there so that keeps the reactor full of uranium so i've got like eight stacks of that stuff which is nice this one takes out waste which is called uh, cyanite and this pipe puts the cyanite into this machine which is called a cyanite reprocessor now the cyanite reprocessor will process cyanide into what's called plutonium, and then this line puts the plutonium into the reactor which you can use as a fuel source. So I believe if there's two of these and the plutonium one, it'll take the plutonium first. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe that's... The, what's going on there? Let me click that. So I, I'm going to have to keep an eye see if it uses this up or uses that stuff up. If it uses this stuff up at some point, I'm going to have to stop that putting in and let it use what's in here. Oh, that's what happened. <clears throat> Let me put my torches back into my slot there, so I know what's going on. There we go. So yeah, there we go. That's uh, so that's taking power from this redstone energy cell. And behind the energy cell, let's just pop that off for a second. We have got the reactor power tap. This is where it puts its power out into my network and also into the cyanide re reprocessor. It's getting power from this. So we'll just put that back. There we go. So that's putting power out to the top and the bottom. Yep. That's all good. So this is holding quite a lot of power there. Um... And as you can see, it's putting power into, not these machines yet, I haven't moved these yet, but it's putting power into the auto disenchanter and my thermal expansion machines here, which I've been using to process stuff. This thing, by the way, is weird again. Um, it only connects, let's just pick that up. I'll come back to it in a second. So this should go blue when I take this out of my inventory. And it hasn't. Which is weird. But if I break that, then it will. It just it saw it, it just charged my sword off. It's a bit weird that um 
it needs a block update next to the next to the LAN there to make it connect. If I put that back, it disconnects. Weird. So I'm not really sure what the crack is with that. There's a certain amount of weirdness going on. Anyway, um, so lens then blocks. Then of course you need a reactor controller, which is this guy. At the minute you can see it's around about 50%. No, that's filling up because that was pulling power for a bit. I'm guessing. So it was about 50%. It's going down a little bit because it's filling that back up, and that just lost some power. Eh, that's full. What's drawing power here? Something's drawing power. It could be filling up all the conduit. Because conduit has a certain amount of power. Storing it. Nothing should be draining. Oh, this is draining. Of course it is. This is working. I just found a lot of black black granite under under the water down there. I was looking... Um, what was I looking for? Let's have a look around for berry bushes. Uh, so yeah, that is, that's drawing power, so it should be, of course it should. Right, so what I had was, I had a little reactor control set on this side. And what I want is, I this middle one, I had set to input toggle reactor on off, set from signal, toggle on pulls. I did have it set from signal, and I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. What I had was, the one to the left of it was set to output energy amount, active while above... Um, actually, the active while below 50 is what well, is how I had it set. So I had that set. So you see that that's lit up, that's active. And now, if we connect to that, then that's going to turn the reactor on. And that's going to go back up to 50%. You see, it's going up nice and quick. You see, it put it, put it out. Put up between 1200 and 1800 ish, so that's uh, 120 to 180 mj a tick. So once that gets to 50, you should see this go off. There we go, so that's gone off. It's cooling down, it's still putting power out while it cools down. Um, so it's going to go a little bit off there. So that's how I was doing it. But the thing with that is, is every time it drops below 50, it just toggles on for a real little bit. And you don't get your uh, ma you don't get your max efficiency out of it like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this around a little bit. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to have this to trigger when it goes below 20%. Okay. Let's see how it does. I'm going to have this to set, to change on pulse. So that's going to toggle on pulse. So what's going to happen is when that that's going to turn on, mm. yep, yeah, that's going to turn on when it's below twenty, which is going to toggle that on with a pulse. When it gets above twenty again, this is going to turn off, so this line will be off. And then what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to do active while above ninety. Commit. So what's going to happen is. Next time that gets to below 20, that's going to turn on, toggle that, which will turn the reactor on. Then when it goes over 20, that's going to turn off again. Then when it hits 90%, this is going to t turn on, which is going to toggle that off. So that'll turn the reactor back off. So we've got a nice little toggle system there. So I've met the reactor go between 20 and 90%. So let it drain down to 20, then it should fill it all the way up to 90 and then stop. And then it should let it fill all, drain all the way back down to 20 again. So that's how I'm going to have that running. And uh, what I've got here, which is really nice, is you can make factory block covers now. So I'm just going to cover that with factory block covers, which I should have some more of over here. And uh, there is that bit. That's one thing that I did. I knew I had some more of them. I couldn't find them. So I made some more. Uh, there we go. Let's just tidy that up. So it kind of looks apart, doesn't it? Uh, the only little bit, bits I haven't showed you in this. Uh, inside, you've got fuel rods. It's a 3x3 three thing of fuel rods inside there and then if we go and look up on top of this guy can I get up <laughs> yeah we've got these guys called reactor control rods so you need one of them on top of each fuel rod so we've got nine of them as well and this colour thing's a bit weird no idea what that's about it's not a chunk bound or anything but anyway there we go so that was the big reactor thing and uh, we've just updated the control in it a bit uh, another thing that was mentioned after the last video was the reason why this isn't working see this is sat there that's got steam the reason why it didn't work is because grid tip machines require an air block behind them. 
So that did damage to me. So that up there is to put out the air. So you need an air block behind to vent the pressure. We'll go, so that'll vent into that block now. And this should uh, work fine. So that's what was going on there. Come on. Slow ass thing. And. There we go, and you heard it vent as well. So that's what's going on there. Um, what else did I do in the stream? In this stream, I made. So that took most of the time, to be honest. But I also made a jetpack. Jetpack needs this thing called a filling station. As you can see, the filling station is full of liquid ethanol, which is pretty cool. Filling station only needs a DC engine to run. So that's like the equivalent of the redstone engine, which is actually running at the minute. It doesn't need to be. Let's turn that off. Um, so that's got. 32, it's got 30,000 in there. Now, this fills up real slow, so I'm actually going to make a second one of these. But what you do is, the ethanol jetpack, you just, oh, you go into the inventory and you just click it in. And it sits on the front there, which looks pretty cool. And uh, that'll be filling up. If I turn it on, it'll be filling up. So there you go, you can see that's filling up to 30,000. I'm just going to drop that below 30,000. So let's just leave that for now. So I'm going to make a second one of these because it takes that long to fill up. But I've now got a jetpack. Now the problem with the jetpack is, it's a little bit weird. Let's go use it. Now I had to change the server properties so that flying is enabled on the server because it kept kicking me off the server. So if we equip it, you see, go straight up. But the forward movement isn't much. So I'm going, I'm pressing forward. And it's not really going anywhere. So what I've been doing is I've been flying up, right, up with it, and then I've been clicking my hand glider on. Use a bang glider to direct myself about. Now, what happened yesterday was um, I flew up. The server disconnected me for flying, so then I fell and I died. So I met these guys. These are called Long Four Boots They're from the Portal Gun mod. Use obsidian, iron, a couple of diamonds. You need to make two boots, combine them into a pair of boots, and you take no fall damage. So that's why I've got them on. So I'm just rocking them guys so I'll take no fall damage. Um, the other thing we did in the stream was I need to start automating my sugarcane production. So I've made a nice little system here. Works really nice. And what we've got is an MFR harvester just with a Ender IO um, photovoltaic cell on top. And that's enough power to keep that full. So when, and then that puts the sugarcane into this ender chest and the ender chest sends the sugarcane downstairs at the, at the opposite end where I've got another ender chest. So that just that is enough to keep this farm running which is really nice. I love the fact that the photovoltaic cell and the harvester work so well together when you've got another little farm like this. Um, so if you head back down again. Whee. Ah, and I met them as well. I'll get to that in a second. So we've got the ender chest here. And what I'm going to get on with in this episode is automating the creation of ethanol. So what we need is we need dirt and sugar into this one. So we need to we need to craft some of the sugar in uh, some of the sugar cane into sugar. So they're going to get fed into that one. I'm going to pull all this out and redo it in a bit. This is just how I left it after the stream. And we're going to put dirt into there. Now I've sussed as well. You can make dirt using plant balls. And you can make plant balls using sugar cane. So we can make out with this but what we need for that is we need to macerate it so we're gonna have to or rock crusher it so we're gonna have to make a macerator to macerate the, the plant balls into dirt so we can actually make the dirt with the sugar as well so the sugar is going to create everything we need it's going to create the sugar it's going to create the dirt then in this one we're going to have the yeast made from that one goes to this and the um, sugar cane is going to go in there as its fuel there we go to produce the ethanol so as you can see there so everything will be running off the sugar which is very nice this guy if you put a redstone signal on it'll, the tag it'll change to sludge creation so it'll accept the right things in from pipes so i'm hoping to get with that with this episode um and then i guess the only other thing i did was make these guys are on version 1.0.7 now which means the elevator blocks don't take xp anymore so i made a couple of elevator blocks these are quite simply made with wool around in the pearls. So rather than having to swim up and down through there now, I had to make a little tunnel because 
the um didn't want to pass through water the this jetpack is weird the uh the elevator won't let me pass through them blocks of water so we have got a little three by three area there around that um i could have made a just a one by one oh maybe it's a one by one actually yeah, it's just a one a one square hole that you can go i can go straight up there up and down sweet so uh i think that's covered pretty much everything i did in the stream uh so there yeah, there we go now did i cover this in an episode or in the stream hmm, i think i covered this in the last episode didn't i the uh the timer thing here now this is all right but it's really slow but uh, it's, it's not bad it's getting me a lot of resources but it is really slow what i want to get on with is making a at some point is making the big gun itself the jet engine um so what let's start with making another jetpack so you can see how i make that so let's get this jetpack in my hand so i can see what i'm doing with it so what do we need for that we need diffusers compressors combustors reservoir and a base panel so I made all this stuff for the other day. We need some more HSLA steel. So I should have a lot of iron in there. Uh, we've got a bit. We've got a bit of steel as well. Hmm. I'm a little bit low on iron. I've been using so much of it. Let's put that in there. Let's take a stack out. We'll just put one of them back. And we'll make a bit more steel in our blast furnace here. So there we go. That's going to craft some more steel for us um actually i don't think i am going to make another jetpack i'm going to wait for i'm just going to keep this one until i get another kind of uh fuel but where'd you go You're there so there's a the recipe for it anyway all pretty straightforward these diffusers are just five in a, that pattern compressors we've made before which is a normal gear with ingots round combustors um ignition unit we used in the gasoline engine of course so we've seen all that before. Base plate, of course, base plate, that's easy enough. And finally, the reservoir, which is pretty cool. That's just base plate, base panels in a cauldron shape. Make sure the reservoir. So that's when I made the jet pack. Um, what I do want to look at is making jet fuel now. Now, making jet fuel is pretty, pretty complex. Well, it's not. It's not. It uses a lot of stuff. What we need is a machine called a fractionator. Fraction, fraction, fractionation unit. There we go. Fraction a tion units sound it out eh? Um so this gets made in a wet table of course. All it needs is a base panel, a mixer and a fuel line. So I've made some fuel line already. Uh, let's have some base panels. And then let's have a mixer. How do you make a mixer? For around an impeller. We can make an impeller. For an impeller we need a gear, so let's get a gear. And an impeller. Put our impeller in there. We'll get us a mixer. Wonderful. So that's uh, nearly everything we need. One of them. One of them. One of these fuel lines. The fuel lines are just uh, obsidian and glass in the work table. Nice and easy. And I need six gold. One, two, three, four, five, six. As you can see, my chest got far too full there. Of stuff, so I've uh, made some jabber barrels for my main ingots there. So they go down here. So gets us a fraction Asian units. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to place it on a gasoline engine. Um, right. Something else I did I just remembered is I banged loads of canola in there, and just so I've got a source of this lubricant, I filled up a little base portable tank with eight buckets worth so I've got eight buckets worth of lubricant the reason why I need lubricant is if I move the oops what happened if I move the CVT unit it loses its lubricant and I need to put a bucket back in so I just wanted to get a little little bit of that lubricant ready so I had someone tap so I've got a bit of lubricant there Um what also I've been doing is I've been grinding stuff up in here let's take that off as well there we go and um, I've ground up so far is a stack of netherrack. Let's get this netherrack dust. I also need to grind a stack of soul sand, which I don't think I've got enough of. Not quite. Right, I'm going to cut camera, so I'm going to get a bit of soul sand. 
just so I've got a stack of this ground up. What happens with saw sand when you grind it is what fuel's in there? Not much at all. Yeah, let's wait for this. So I'm guessing I might as well put once I've got the materials that I need, I might as well put this on top of there and make another bevel gear. So for now I'll just put it there just to show you. So that gets power in from the bottom like the extractor does. So I'm gonna need one of these bevel gears so I can send the power upwards. And uh, what does this need speed and power wise? 65, 8192. So I, I actually need the same as that then. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably let this clear out and then I'll swap the fractionator for the extractor there for now just to uh, show this in action because there's no point in making another CVT and a bevel gear just to show you this in action. So uh, I'll be, I shall be doing that. Um, this thing is pretty complex. You need to make jet fuel, you need tar, which is what we're making in there right now. So, saw sand gets ground into tar sand. So, there's the tar that it needs. Uh, netherrack dust, which if you've seen, I ground up a stack of netherrack. Uh, it's got, I'm going to put a stack of coal in there. I put a stack of blaze powder. So, I've been and killed some blazes. Um, a stack of ethanol, that's easy enough. So I've been using that anyway for the engines. And a stack of magma cream. And I'm going to have to put one gas tier in. But the gas tier doesn't get used up. So I'm going to use a stack of this at a time. I want to see how much a stack of each item in here gets me. So what we're going to be doing is... Uh, there's a stack of blaze powder. There's a gas tier. There's a stack of coal. Um, there's a stack of ethanol. There's a stack of netherite dust. So that's most of the stuff that needs to go in there. What we're we missing magma cream, aren't we? Uh, tar sand and magma creams. So I need to make a stack of magma creams. Now I'm a little bit low on slams, but uh, I thought I pulled raz. I did pull raz some more blaze powder. Cool. So I've got 64 and 15. So I've actually got enough slams. So I just like a bit more. Uh, there we go. Stack of that stuff, and then. I'm not sure exactly how much this makes, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drum on top of that. I think I've got a drum over here. And I don't know if this automatically outputs. It probably doesn't. I'm going to try with a barrel on top. I'll get power in there once that tar sand's made. And I'll move this about. And I'll be back when we're ready to make some jet fuel. Awesome. Back in a bit. Hello, I'm back again, and uh, I just wanted to catch this on camera, but I, unfortunately I missed it, but uh, it went below 20, and it stopped again at 90, so that's working exactly how I wanted it to. Now, this thing I've noticed, it doesn't actually ever stop. Even when the reactor goes down to zero, it's like, puts out 0.2 RF, which uh, isn't much at all, but it gradually goes up. So if I didn't use power for quite a long time, which, I must use it somewhere. Now, if I didn't use it for quite a long time, then in theory... It could um, go overnight. No, it should be alright still. Um, yeah, I think it'll be alright. Anyway, anyway, let's go on with this then. So I've let this run its course. I've let this run its course and it should be empty now. Yeah, that's empty. So all my ores have been processed. So what I can do now is I can drag this out of here. Like so. And I've got all these bits in here. Now the only thing I'm not sure of here is if the thing's going to output into this drum. I might have to put a um, fluid duct between it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bang that on there. Now I need the 8k rad version, don't I? Which which one's that? Power on is four times torque, so it's power off that I need. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come around here and I'm just going to break that cable for now. Like so, I didn't want to break the wall. Damn pick too good. So there we go. So that should all be okay. That can go back up there, that other one. Um and that's Yeah, that's right. Any fuel in there? No fuel in there anyway. So this goes up here, this fractionation unit. Did I say that right? Fractionation? I did. Christ. So there we go. And uh, let's put all these bits in. 
So there's the six bits in that side. There's the gas tier there. Now, it looks like the output of this is the top. Does it actually say anything? Fuel lines connect only to the top of this machine. So, it may go straight into this barrel, which would be fun. Now, I'm not sure how much this is going to put out. If it puts like uh, 64 buckets or less, I could probably be better off using a portable tank. But I had a spare barrel, so I thought I might as well use it. So now I need a stack of ethanol crystals. We're going to go in there. And there. Okay, that's turned on. That's running at 8 kilorads. This should be working. And it is wonderful. Now, I had a little test yesterday in single player with this, and it didn't seem to be taking all the stuff all the time. So let's see what it gives us. 11 buckets worth. That's interesting. That's quite a lot, isn't it? And see there, look, it took up a bit of ethanol, but that's all it took. So I think it has a random chance to take stuff each time, and it's not putting out into there. Okay, um, that's good to know. Let me try a couple of things. Let me try... See if they automatically put out into a fuel line. Can I get onto that chest, please? Thank you. If they auto put out into a fuel line, I might auto go into a barrel after that, but... Let's have a look. So it automatically puts out into there. That's interesting. Will you automatically put into there? No. No, you won't. Grr. Um. Okay, that's a little bit irritating. Let's try the other method then with the fluid ducts. And I'll need a servo. See if this connects okay. And we can put that behind there. Oh shit, didn't want to do that, did I? Get off. We cannot put that behind there. We can put it off on top of here. Uh, so that don't want to connect to that anyway. Or does... Well, yeah, it doesn't look like it, does it? Hmm. So I may have lost some putting it in there. Can I... Can I stop this? Let's, uh, let's stop this a second. By turning that off. Should wind the motor down. Why you no know one motor down? Why that working? Well, I never knew that was like that. I thought that worked. Hmm. I was sure that worked before when I did that. I'll have to put it in uh, that one then. That's not going to go in there either, is it? So that should wind it down. So uh, let me give me a minute. I'll work out how to get this fuel out of here because I don't want to waste all that fuel I've just made. And I should be back when I've worked out how to get it out. Okay, then here I am in my little single player test world where I, uh, I do a few setup things, get me red around stuff before I make an episode. I just want to show you this really quick. This is a MFR laser drill. Someone asked in a comment the other day if it can get the grid thick stuff. So I set one up, and as you can see down here, we've got bauxite, tetrahydrate right nickel and galena ore uh, that's from galactic craft so it does get some grid tech stuff there's no iridium ore it's found as yet but that doesn't mean to say it can't find any it just means it maybe hadn't found any yet so that is an uh, option just so you know and while i'm here this stuff silicon ore this is the stuff i need from galactic craft that i ain't got any of yet that's what i need to progress with galactic craft you find that down at diamond level and i just haven't found any yet but i'm look i'm on the lookout for that in the other world um, right while i'm here a couple of things. One thing I had a little mess around with this the other day. It's, in fact, this here is what happens if you get sucked through a rotary jet engine and then don't turn it off. You get sucked through it, sets fire to everything. But then if you actually don't turn it off, that's the that's what happens. Let me show you real quick. Uh, what's it called? Turbine of some kind. Let's go with jet. Not a jet either, is it? Oh, what the hell's it called? That rotary. Now I found a little issue, by the way. One thing, uh, one issue that I found is, come on, jet engine. I know where you should be. You should be with these. There we go. It's called a gas turbine. There we go. Let's get one of them placed down. I'll just grab a bucket of jet fuel to put in him. Cool. So. That puts out loads of power. <laughs> it's very loud. Check this out. 
Alright, let's go cut a creative a sec. <laughs> so, it, it sucks you through. But then, not, not only does it suck you through, it also sets on fire. And that is eventually going to start heating up. And exploding. Oh, I'm not getting sucked through now. So that's starting to break, it'll set fire. Set on fire pretty soon. But that's all good fun, isn't it? I like it. Set. <laughs> so anyway, I did this the other day and I let it keep going and eventually sets on fire. It's not actually on fire yet. But the one that was here set on fire, then it blew up, and that's a creator it left. So you need to be very aware that you don't, in your proper build, you don't want to get sucked through one of them because it's going to be a bit of a mess. Now I've sussed out a solution to the gas thing. I want to show you it in here. So what I, what I did was, you can pump out of a reservoir into a drum. So I'm just using a creative coil here. You can get these coils. You can spawn these ones in. That I've just got uh, infinite energy, much like the creative cells over there. So I've got the same setup here. So I've gone in from the fuel line to a reservoir, and then the reservoir is pumping into a jet fuel drum. So I'm going to go back into the overworld and see how much we get. See, that has actually got me a full drum's worth, and uh, I'm not even halfway through any of the stacks. So that's kind of awesome, isn't it? So I, I will be back once I've got through all that in the world. So it might take about an hour to process it all, but I'll see how much I get, I'll see how much fuel I get from that. So I'll see you then. Well, this is pretty crazy, the amount of uh, jet fuel this produces. I've actually just turned the engine off there, and uh, this guy's full, and it stopped. See, I'm down to 30, is the lowest one, no, 29 on the coal. But, um, quite a bit of other stuff left still, 32 magma creams. And, obviously the gas tea doesn't get used up, so that's all good. Now what I've got is, I've got two full drums there. Jesus. I've got, um, I had like 240 odd thousand milli buckets in there the reservoir's got 64 buckets worth in not sure how much the fuel line's got in or the fluid ducts but just fill another drum here so i think i'm gonna i'm gonna stop it there i can set this up again later but um yeah so you get a hell of a lot of this fuel now it depends of course how quick the fuel gets used Um i think it gets used pretty quick in the old gas turbine here but let's make a gas turbine anyway i've got most of the bits ready yet pretty straightforward stuff combustor is pretty straightforward when I'm ignition units from a gas engine. Compressor is easy enough. Other bits are all easy enough. Diffuser. Very straightforward bits. And then the only other bit that we haven't seen before is this thing called a compound turbine. Now it uses, it uses these things and each of these ticks a shaft unit, a steel ingot and a base panel. So they're quite expensive because I needed 16 them for this so that adds up using quite a bit of steel this shaft coming in the middle is pretty straightforward and then you put all them together and you get a compound turbine and that's the last thing we need for that thing and that gets us our gas turbine wonderful so we've got fuel we've got a gas turbine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change things around here a bit need that, look at that guy's full already jesus I'm, I'm amazed how much fuel this kicks out so we'll go again I still have like 100,000 in it. So that should drain everything out. And then uh, we'll see exactly how much I've got. So now what I can do is I can start pulling all this to bits. I'm going to take them dynamometers. Dynamometers. Oh. Um, I'm not going to need that. So I'll take them off the wall. Um, yeah, like I see, I'm going to get rid of the dynamometers. I'm going to move this across one. And I'm going to... Always breaking blocks. And I'm going to use the gas turbine i'm actually gonna have to move things a little bit so it doesn't destroy everything behind it so that's gonna go there Is that got fuel in that's actually got a lot of fuel in i won't mind saving that so um, i think i'll save that it's not a great deal of fuel is it but let's break that again and i'm just gonna put that into this coil thing that i've got here it's just so i can use it up where is it there it is the coil seems to use quite a, lose quite a lot of energy when you put stuff into it, so um, I don't use it a great deal. But it's good to have as emergency power, I guess. So that'll be filling that up. 
If we check it with our reader thing, that guy, we'll see that that should be going up. Cool, so that'll just use that fuel up in there. 32 minutes. What I'm going to do is uh, I'll set this back up with the extractor so the extractor's going to move across one. And uh, I've actually used all my ores up, so I'm going to go man a stack of iron ore, for example, and then I can show you how quick the extractor goes. So you've seen how slow the extractor is with this setup with a gas turbine. Now the extractor itself, it takes, as far as I understand how this works, it takes 65 kilowatts of power, but that's the minimum it takes. More power, so the, the torque and the rad stay the same, but more power will in, increase the speed of the speed that the extractor produces. Yeah, so uh, we shall see exactly how quick it is when I come back the next time. Okay, then I'm back with uh, quite a bit of a change around here. I'm not really sure I'm going to wire this up yet. It's kind of weird this because you see that's got a little um, target of yeast in the corner there. That one's got a target of yeast, uh, yeast as well, but on it is a target of sludge. And that means I need a redstone signal on it, but it affects the other things around it. So I'm not sure I'm going to get a redstone signal on there. Probably going to use Ender IO conduit. And I think I'm going to have to use Ender IO conduit here as well. See that? Um, I'll just turn that off. Yeah, so that's not running. Uh, I've got 113,919 there. If I turn this on, it, it comes up the drum into the pipe, but it's not going into the gas turbine. Oh, possibly because it's turned off. Hang on. No, I'm still not going in. So, that little setup's not feeding into there, which is unfortunate. I could, I suppose, do it with a bucket at the minute, just to get this guy in the go. Let's just take a bucket out. Put a bucket's worth in there. I don't know if we turn that on. <laughs> Extremely loud. So, we've got our gas turbine. We've turned it on. I've put it facing that way. So I don't get sucked in. It just needs to have one air block behind it, it seems. And um, it looks alright other than that. So that's all cool. What I need now is another bevel gear. And I need my sound muffler. Because that thing's so loud. It's ridiculous. So my sound muffler is going to go right in front of it here. Uh, I've set this back up using the CVT. So that's able, we're able to turn that on and off as needed to make more jet fuel. Which is good. Um, so bevel gears, I've just noticed, I was about to make some. Where was I about to make some? There, look. And now it looks like the recipe's changed because we get four. So clearly when I made this the first time, we only got one because I've only got one of them. I can't find any other anywhere else. So it looks like the update has increased the number of bevel gears we get, which is kind of nice. And uh, if you remember, the bevel gears you put down like so, they need to see what colour you want. So purple is going to be my input and blue is my output. So purple input, blue output. And now if we click that with our screwdriver, we should see the green and the red facing the right way. Yep, green in from the back, red going up. Wonderful. So now we can get our extractor back on the scene, and our extractor needs water. As if I forgot to sort that out. Um, well, what I have been doing is I have made some... I've made a few things. I've made some... It's been a bit loud in my house. I haven't been able to record a great deal of stuff. I've made some ender tanks. I've actually got one left there, but I, just, I actually need to make a couple more. So, at the minute, I had Aquas Accumulator under there, I had one under there, I had one on the um, Fermenter Stroke Extractor, and I had one over there. So I took them four Aquas Accumulators, and I put them under here. So I always do this little water plant. So that's all feeding water into this ender tank. And then I put one output tank over there for the steam thing. I put one under there for the cyanide reprocessor. And at the minute, I've got one under there. So there's three. And then this is going to be four. So what I'm going to want is... I am going to want... How do I want this? I'm just going to put it there for now. So that should feed water into that. Which you can't actually tell until we try running it though. Um, so, but we, it looks like we're ready to, to try it. So, that run for a couple of seconds so it looks like a bucket's worth gets you just over a minute. So let's put a load of stuff into it. Yeah. So at the minute, until I work out a way of getting this. Between episodes I'll probably make some Ender IO liquid pipes. 
Oops. One gun there. I can set them back out there, can I? That's interesting. I wonder if I can with that as well. Oh, I can. That is interesting. Um, I can set liquids back out the engines. Very nice. Uh, so, I guess what we want to do now is a bit of a sample here with a stack of iron. I've got a stack of iron. I've got a little bit of other stuff while I was out on about as well. I went to the hollow hill. Chuck that guy in there and uh, we are going to want to be able to get stuff out of this, aren't we? So let's put the same oops, same setup over here that we had before with that guy, wrench that, add a servo, set to disabled, so that'll take things out of there. Ideally this wants to be a redstone furnace. So we can process the stuff straight into ingots. I think what my best bet is going to be is waiting until I've got um, a a network on the go for automating all this proper. But uh, let's turn it on and see how quick it goes. So check this out. So it's starting to run. That's working. So you can see we've got all f four criteria met, and this is still speeding up. This at the minute is warming up. And once it gets a full speed, it's uh, quite ridiculous. I should have maybe put the dynamic meter on here just to show you. But, so that's only putting out 39, 34 megawatts. Still going up. And it's running at 41, 600 rads. That's going to get more and more power as things go. So it's processed all 64 of the iron already. We've got seven iron ore out of it already. So as you can see, this is much quicker than it was because we're just chucking loads of power into it. So we're going to be able to do things at full speed. Now, another thing I want to test as well is I want to see if a build craft gate will be able to turn this on and off if it can detect if this has got items in it. So uh, that should be, that would be nice if we can get that going. You see there, I don't get pulled in. Oh, I could get set on fire though, it seems. Huh, interesting. Didn't do no damage though. Weird. But as you can see, we're kind of blocked on there. And it's just processing things super fast. So that is what I wanted to achieve for this episode. So there we go, we're done. Um, a couple of other things just to mention while I've been knocking about. One thing I've done is I've just set this little thing up. Really basic. Chest with a load of rotten flesh in it, an item duct, if you look in this, set to move one thing at a time, and you see that's stuffed with rotten flesh, set to move one thing at a time, which is a rotten flesh, puts it onto the drying rack, another one here, set to pull out, so I've, I've set a filler on both of these, look, whitelist, rotten flesh, and whitelist, monster jerky, so that is nice and slowly, but steadily, making me monster jerky, because I run out of food, so not really quick, you can expand this massively, um, say show me how to do this uh, but that, for now I'm just going to leave it like that just doing that nice and passively and uh, getting us some stuff there how's this going so you can see it's kind of stuck on doubling up that bit look how quick that bit goes it's ridiculous so that is very much quicker and very nice uh, I'm quite impressed with that uh, thank you very much Rotary Craft for actually making that quicker. Um, other thing I've done is made a second harvester and a solar panel. I've had to move that down because NPCs kept jumping up onto it and then jumping on top of that and then jumping on onto there and destroying the plants. But uh, we've got a strong box filling up with string, well, with cotton. I just saw one go in there then. I've just made a stack of cotton, a uh, stack of wool, I mean, which wool's nine strings four if you know what i mean four cotton buds four cottons in a square make a string and nine in a square make a wool so i'm using that to get my wool and my string which is nice and uh, the final thing is i moved my xp stuff down here i've not actually put servos in them yet i'll do that while i'm here uh, servo servo i'll just set these to go over a redstone signal if I can actually click on to it come here you why not click click on that you'll see a load of berries come out 
Let's go into this Java barrel. I can't seem to click on that one. Let me in. There we go. Do all that. So I've got loads of XP coming through there. Now what I want to make next time is I want to make the Princess from Bibliocraft. At Biblio. I'm probably going to talk through more to do that in my, in my uh, beginner's guide. But this thing, printing press, I'm going to make one of them. Box of iron, blade rod and stuff. And we're going to make the thing that goes with it, the type sitting table. And I'm going to make copies of my repair. So I don't have to keep guessing with the um, enchants. Now later on we can make a thing called an osmotic enchanter. And then we can just choose what enchants we want anyway. But for now I'm going to want a decent set of armour with repair on it. So I'm going to start using the, the printing press to get me specific books which we can then make copies of. As you can see I processed some black granite blocks which uh, uh, are spreading across my base. I'm trying to do all the path in that stuff because of course mobs can't spawn on it. But just to finish off then, down we go. Is this guy finished? He still hasn't finished. But he's still going pretty quick. So that was one stack of iron and we're already at nearly two stacks of iron or flakes there. So yeah, still a bit manual at the minute. I'm still having to manually put this into here but as you can see this has all got very big potential once we start properly automating our processing line so i'm going to wrap up there thank you as always for watching i hope it was entertaining um thank you for joining me and i hope i see you next time cheers bye